Now, it's not just parents and students grappling with back to school anxiety. School boards are also feeling a lot of pressure. They are now faced with the responsibility of protecting staff and students from COVID-19. But what happens if a student contracts the virus at school? Can schools be held liable? So for answers to these questions, we're joined by personal injury lawyer Nanesh Kotak. Nanesh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Good morning. Let's start with the expectation of schools when it comes to protecting students from the virus. What are your thoughts? Right. Well, I think we have to sort of commence with the understanding that not every injury you can be compensated for. Um, to get compensated in, in improving negligence, you have to show you know, a couple of things. The duty of care, um, that there was negligence, in this case on behalf of a school board, for example, by not acting as a prudent organization or a person. And, and that negligence resulted and caused the damage. So just because, you know, in the case at hand, just because a student catches COVID-19 or parent does as a result of a student going to a particular school, it doesn't mean, in fact, that there will be compensation. You'd have to look much, much deeper. You'd have to look at, OK, is the school following reasonable guidelines that, that they have before them uh, presented by public health, by, by the provincial government? Are they, you know, for example, with respect to masks or with respect to uh, to to hygiene and cleaning? Are you know, are, first you'd have to show that wait a minute, something went, went clearly wrong. They were negligent. Their actions were were such. Then think about it. You got to show that the child caught COVID as a result of this action or of a school and not from somewhere else. Um, so in those very limited circumstances where, you know, there's clear negligence and you can show that direct causation, the child caught COVID, maybe passed it on to somebody who was more vulnerable, right. in, probably only in those circumstances would you see, in fact, uh, uh, liability and perhaps compensation. But it seems like a very, very difficult case to prove, even if all the all the evidence, you know, from the family's perspective may be there. How difficult would that be? I think it would be, uh, quite frankly, extremely difficult. They would have to be such an egregious, uh, I, I think, violation at the school uh, for courts to find liability. Don't forget, courts are going to be looking at this, you know, with with an eye that look. It, you know, it's a known pandemic. Um, parents have, in the public school system have been given a choice. Your child could stay home um, and study, or but you know, or or come in, and then I, you know, or a combination of both. And I think that's that's being offered as as well. So there is some you know, assumption of risk here. Um, I think it'll be very difficult to, to prove liability, not impossible, you know, things can happen. You know, there, there could be events at the school where um, the teachers or, 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 or the school just completely, you know, ignores the uh, guidelines of social distancing and mixing the children together right. from their different co cohorts. Uh, you, could, you could see that happening. And, and you know, I, I, uh, but, but again, I, I feel it, it, it will be quite, quite difficult. Now, this might be a little inside baseball, but given, you know, if the possibility that a specific teacher um, didn't follow the rules, um, could that individual be held responsible specifically? Right. Uh, you know, certainly. Um, but, you know, there'll be vicarious, what's called vicarious liability. And the teacher's employer, the school board, uh, would be responsible as well for the actions of the, of, of the teacher. Uh, so, yes, you know, the, uh, you, you'd, you'd look to compensation from the teacher, and uh, but it would more likely come from the school board who has the insurance uh, available to, to uh uh, to compensate, but you know, all employees, uh, you know, their actions, their employer uh, uh, has to uh, uh, deal with the consequences in terms of potential uh, legal liability. So yeah, it, it could end up being on the school board, even, even if it's just one particular teacher at the school who wasn't uh, following guidelines. Now, as opposed to in-class learning, a lot of people are now going the alternative route, learning pods, for example, people, you know, conducting uh, classes in home, even for other children. What right. are the responsibilities of the homeowner or the instructor in these cases? What basically what protection do they have if someone does get ill? You know, and this is this is a very, very serious concern uh, because, you know, one could look at this. You know, there, whether it's in one's own home or you're taking turns between homes with a group of children and instructor. 
Um, if uh, one of the children that catches COVID-19 and, it, and you know a parent gets it and, that, and you have significant loss, there could be a valid claim simply because you know they don't have set guidelines like the school board does that you know you have to do certain things. So it becomes a bit up in the air as what was reasonable in those circumstances. The other thing to clearly watch out for is who will pay. Uh, the home insurance may not cover this because it could be looked at. Is it even the compensation for the instructor? Is it a business venture? Um, and uh, uh, you know, so it takes us beyond uh, what normally be covered with with home insurance. So my recommendation, if you're planning on something like this, with a group of parents, get a separate insurance policy. Talk to an insurance company and say, look, these are the homes it's going to be in. Can will we be covered if somebody uh, uh, you know contracts COVID and there's loss? The answer is probably going to be no. Okay, what's it going to cost uh, amongst our group so that there is coverage? I think that is the the most prudent thing to do. You know, parents are you know in some ways you know you're protecting yourself, protecting your families and your children. Well, take that step further. Get the proper insurance so you can sleep at night and and not uh, uh, you know risk uh, um, uh, you know a judgment where you could uh, you know uh, have to pay a fair bit of money and and may lose your home. Now, we don't have a lot of time, but I want to ask you if a waiver would protect, um, you know, the homeowner, for example, the teacher, or even in cases of schools. Is that something that would uh, right. be an idea? You know, waivers have been enforced when it comes to sporting activities such as ski hills. I sincerely doubt that a school waiver uh, will be enforceable. First of all, you know, the children can't sign the waiver. They're below the age of 18. They can't sign contracts. And it's almost, you know, there's that tremendous pressure. Well, particularly private schools, if they have the waivers, you know, well, I can't go to school if, if my parents don't sign this waiver. You're almost forced to sign it. So right. I, I strongly, I don't think they'll be uh, as enforceable as the ones that you sign when you go for, to a resort or a ski hill, for example. A lot to keep in mind as if it wasn't complicated enough. Ninesh Kotak, thank you so much for all of your insight.